So at face value, this team looks pretty standard and full of overused mods, but that's exactly what we want our opponents to think, as I designed our team to basically do exactly the opposite of what they're supposed to. Ever seen a physical choice bandit Clefable with Meteor Mash, or a choice spec special attack in Gyarados? Neither have probably any of my opponents. So today we're going to see just how valuable the element of surprise can be in competitive Pokemon, plus see if these things are any good on the other side of the spectrum. Alright, so we've got ourselves a match against a member of my Discord server, and honestly this game is probably the craziest I've had in a while, and it's a super fun one, I'm a believer of the team. Like I mentioned, if you're looking at the team preview here, you're looking at my team thinking, damn, there are some absolute threats over there. And they definitely are some threats, just not in the way that anybody thinks. Hey, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button, it would help out the channel a lot and I would appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get into the match. Alright, so, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Hisui and Gudra, looking like it's an absolute pain from the shell. As I toss out the Hot Frog, I'm going full physical heat train out here, I basically just want to get my Stealth Rock up, but... I'm also looking at the Gudra thinking, damn, this thing is actually kind of an issue for my team, so... I'm actually just going to prioritize grabbing some chip damage off on this thing, I can also kind of scout to see what this thing wants to do, what potential set it might be, as uh, it actually fires off a Hydro Pump at me, and surprisingly I'm actually going to be able to take two, which is kind of nice. So, I run into a situation here where I don't really have a lot that wants to deal with the Hisui and Gudra, so I'm basically just going to go ahead and prioritize getting up Stealth Rock, knowing I can at least take another Hydro Pump if it lands it, I can actually then go for another Earthquake. So. I go for the Stealth Rock here, as they're actually going to end up switching out. Do not want to roll the dice for another Hydro Pump. And they're actually going to end up switching out anyway into the Easy Bake of an Ass Rotom, as that's actually perfect, because I do get up my Stealth Rock, and this thing is actually a pretty damn scary Mon for my team as well. So, sitting here looking at potential switch-ins. I, I don't have a lot that directly wants to switch into this thing easily. I have a lot of plans for the Pokemon in the back, but at this point, I'm thinking yeah, a lot of time you do see these things as like a Choice Scarf, they're going to go for a Trick or something like that. Um, I actually just end up staying in, and I'm going to go for the Iron Head just to kind of scout what this thing wants to do. It does actually end up going for that trick, and it's going to give me uh, its Choice Scarf, which is kind of fine, but obviously going for Iron Head uh, is not going to really do anything to this. I basically stayed in here just to see what it wanted to do, and now it's looking like I'm kind of a sitting duck or frog for this thing to basically just go for a Bolt Switch, uh, something along the lines of that. Of course, they can't go for like an Overheat with the Flash Fire, so what I'm actually doing is end up switching into the Landorus. So Landorus is a mon that has been the king of OU for literally ages. And uh, this is actually going to be a special attacking one where my dude actually gets access to Nasty Plot now along with a move called Sand Seer Storm that can hit really hard as long as it doesn't miss. So I bring this in fully expecting something like the Volt Switch, but they actually make a nice prediction and go for the will o -Wisp. What that does is essentially a Burnt Landorus is kind of worthless. However, I'm special attacking and that's actually kind of exactly what we want at this point. We want to bait them into thinking I'm a different type of guy than I am. So the burn is actually fine as at this point, you know, I can't really touch this Rotom that hard. I obviously can't hit it with a ground move and Grass Knot's going to help me. So it's kind of coming down to if I want to commit my Terra, but I'm actually just going to go for the Nasty Plot, knowing that I can take pretty much any attack this Rotom wants to throw at me. And then a non-Terra Terra Blast actually is close to knocking this thing out, if not grabbing the KO. So they actually end up going for that Overheat. I just barely live it with 13, which after this burn recoil, I'm going to be put down to 3, and the Landorus sweep is likely not going to happen. And at this point, I kind of just need to cut my losses and get some chip damage off on this damn Rotom, because there's like two Pokemon on this team that my my team does not handle well, Rotom being one of them, so I'm going to go for this Terra Blast uh, with that Nasty Plot special attack looking nice. It's actually really close to knocking it out. Uh, with the Life Orb, I'm actually going to end up knocking myself out. But I'm honestly fine with this trade. I get the chip that I need to on this thing, and they leave the oven on, and the overheat goes right into the air. So the whole fucking place burns down, and at this point, I can grab myself a Revenge Switch. So, looking at my options, one of my most fun Pokemon that I'm excited to try out here is Special Attacking Choice Specs Gyarados with some pretty insane coverage. Why does Gyarados learn the moves that it does? I have no idea, but I bring in the Gyarados here. And what that does is, with this thing's special attack being dropped, I know that Gyarados' bulky ass can take a Thunderbolt from this thing, so I'm actually going to go for a Thunderbolt of my own, expecting Dondozo to switch in, but to my surprise, they actually just stay in and go for the will of it, you know, because you see a Gyarados, and uh, it's basically 100% of the time going to be a physical attacker, so a burn is going to basically ruin the, what this thing's all about, but uh, of course, you know, I'm choice specs with fucking Thunderbolt over here, so the burn basically does nothing, and that's actually best case scenario for me at this point. Um, they were probably likely thinking I go for something like a Ground Terra and try to set up a Dragon Dance, but nope. I somehow summon the power of electricity out of my Gyarados, who is four times weak to it, 
And two of them is actually going to take care of the Rotom. I honestly thought the first one was going to do it, but uh, listen, I'm a special attacking Gyarados. This thing is not meant to be doing this, so it's not the strongest, but with the coverage, I'm pretty confident that I actually have uh, a great matchup against this team. So, back is going to come the Hisui and Gudra. For whatever reason, this thing is super especially defensive, and me being locked into Thunderbolt is not a good time, so I'm actually going to switch out of here and... Gyarados is looking super nice against a couple of Pokemon on their team, specifically things like the Dondozo, where I can resist and have the coverage with that T-Bolt. So, uh, they're actually going to go in for the Draco Meteor as I switch right back into Lava Frog. Uh, I basically just kind of want to trade this thing, get an Earthquake off, get as much damage as possible, uh, and just kind of see if they land another Hydro Pump here. So, the Earthquake doesn't quite do the job, but I've got this thing kind of right where I want it, as it does actually land another Hydro Pump, but uh, Hot Frog is out here eating that shit up for breakfast. So. I just go for another Earthquake here. I'm kind of just spamming the Quake to try to do as much as possible. As they realize, they're actually going to end up switching into the Dondozo. Now, this thing is a defensive-ass wall that can basically handle, you know, any type of Heatran all day. So, that is not ideal. So, an Earthquake, you know, non-stab, not going to do a whole lot to the Don. So, uh, at this point, I'm actually just going to switch right back into the Gyarados. I have an interesting opportunity to try to get some predictions going. Plus, you know, switching this thing in, getting an Intimidate is really nice. And they can't really afford to leave this thing in. So... It opens up the door to see if this Gyarados can get some other stuff going with this crazy moveset. So, the Intimidate is super nice, Gyarados comes in for free as they do go for that liquidation, and Gary's just gonna laugh off the damage. Being burnt is kind of annoying as that residual damage is just it is slowly taking me down, but we're still in a pretty good spot here. Now, I don't directly want to go for the T-Bolt because we've already revealed that that's what we have. Uh, so I'm actually going to go for the Ice Beam, hoping maybe they actually switch into something like the Breloom, as they're actually instead going to go into the Hatterene. Now this thing is an interesting Pokemon, and I do have an answer for this as well. So I go for that Ice Beam with the Choice Specs, actually going to get a nice little chip damage with that critical hit. You know, these things relatively bulky on the special side, and uh, I'm happy to just get as much damage as I can, as I do want to conserve the Gyarados because... At this point, it's kind of looking like it's it's going to be my MVP. If you can, if I can pull off the Specs Gyarados Clutch, uh, I'm going to do everything I can. So, I switch out the Gyarados, and I'm going to bring in the Clefable. Clefable's a dude who ordinarily is kind of an interesting stalemate with this matchup, but I know ordinary Clefable, baby, they are going to go for that Psy Shock. And that hits me on the physical side, and that actually does a shit ton of damage. And that is not ideal. As I'm considering what to do here, I'm thinking, wait, hold on. I can literally just outspeed and click Meteor Mash, Choice Banded Clefable, Grabs the kill against the hat, and uh, <laughs> Meteor Mash is just such a cool coverage move to have on the Clefable. And this thing's actually paired with a Terra Steel that we might just see come out later. So, killing the Hatterene is amazing. That's kind of just an annoying Pokemon out of the way, as now they get a switch into their Breloom. So I'm thinking, hold on, if I can predict them to go for the Spore, I can switch into my Breloom, and mine's actually a special attacking one with the Sludge Bomb coverage, and I can win, I can beat this one on one. Unfortunately, though, they actually just go for the Bullet Seed, and that reveals that they are going to be loaded dice, and they also probably have the Mach Punch, and after this damage, it's not looking like I'm going to be able to take a Mach Punch from this thing. So we got a little little Shroom on Shroom violence that it's not looking like I'm going to be able to come out on top with. Uh, it was worth it for me to just try to get for that, go for that Spore Prediction, but it doesn't really quite work out as they do go for that Mach Punch, and with some Extendo-ass arms, I do go down. But what that does do is opens up the door for a revenge switch in, and Gyarados is just the guy for this. I also have plans for Choice Banded Gengar over there, but at this point I really feel like Gyarados just has a nice uh, kind of pressure switch in here, because if they switch out, there's not really a lot that they can go into. If I predict the Dondozo and go for a Thunderbolt, uh, it kind of just puts them in a spot where it's kind of a roll. So I'm actually just going to end up going for the Ice Beam here, as I do outspeed, and Choice Specs Ice Beam from Gyarados is going to be able to knock out the Breloom. Which is absolutely amazing. Uh, had I gone for a T-Bolt, they probably expected me to go for the T-Bolt, expecting Dondozo, but we do get the play correct, and Gyarados is out here absolutely eaten. So, now they get a free switch, and they're actually going to bring in the Sneasler. This is a Pokemon that is honestly such a disruptor in the OU meta right now, with its ability to get unburdened, it's actually kind of insane. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to expect them to go for a Dire Claw, as I decide to switch in the Gengar. I'm thinking either they go for Dire Claw or something like a Close Combat to activate a White Herb, but to my surprise, they just straight up throw a damn rock at my face. A hard stone is actually just going to knock out Gengar. And that is unfortunate. Main reason being that now this thing has gotten rid of its item, it's actually going to activate its unburden to where it's extremely fast and uh, it hits really damn hard. So what I'm going to do is bring back in the Gyarados for an Intimidate. It's hilarious that I'm even still intimidating with my goofy ass choice specs on, but 
That is gonna be super nice because what that does is allows me to basically take a Dire Claw from this thing. And the plan works perfectly. I'm able to live it with 29, fire off a Scald in return where I'm actually able to luckily grab the Scald Burn, which is actually insane. That's kind of exactly what I needed. Um, but at this point, here's what I'm thinking. I can't take another attack with the Gyarados here, but Gyarados is really important for my late game. It's the only thing I have that really beats their Dondozo. And I've got myself a plan. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into the Heatran. This is essentially going to be a sack play. Getting rid of the Heatran is then going to allow me to bring in the Clefable for free. And I've got some shenanigans uh, under my belt for the Clefable matchup. So, I bring in the Hot Frog and this thing is basically just built to just come in here and die. Uh, they do go for the Dire Claw, which does not affect me, which is honestly fine. Uh, because I know this thing's easily just going to be able to outspeed and it definitely has some type of coverage to kill the Heatran. Uh, so, I just click the Earthquake as the Frog is just going to kind of face his demise. As they're actually going to end up going for the Terra. And it is going to be the Terra fighting, which is going to basically ensure that they are able to take care of the Heatran here. Uh, with this thing being burnt, they don't want to take any chances on some damage. Uh, so they put the little fist on his head, and I am going to end up going down to the close combat. So, uh, that is fine though, because that's exactly what I needed to happen, because I can essentially now bring out Clefable, who kind of sets himself up on a silver platter saying, Hey, you can go for that super effective poison move, and please do it. I basically, at this point... So here's the deal, Gyarados has 19 HP, whereas the burn is going to do 10 HP damage to me. So I can't afford for Gyarados to stay out any longer than it needs to. So what I need to happen is, Clefable needs to win this matchup, and then Gyarados can hopefully win 1 versus 1 against the Don Dozo. As they have the Dozo and a very weak Gudra. Now this thing is here, of course, to bash people's faces in with Meteor Mash, but I also am running the Terra Steel, which not only gives me more damage on the Meteor Mash, but gives me a nice little immunity to the poison. So. A Dire Claw does knock me out here, and I think it's the only move they have that does. So I go for this Terra Steel, and that is going to essentially make me immune to Dire Claw, but all I need for them to do is essentially click that. And then it comes down to, can Special Gyarados clutch out the rest of the match here? So I go ahead and put the axe on my head, looking like an absolute badass, and physical attacking Clefable is something that uh, I didn't know I needed. They do go for that Dire Claw. Our Steel Terra does exactly what it's designed to do, and a Meteor Mash is going to finish this thing off. So. Now I'm in a position where Dondozo can definitely knock out Clefable, but I can actually grab a little bit of damage in return, as I also get the attack boost, which is kind of the, another funny part about running Meteor Mash, is that chance for that attack boost to just be even buffer of a Clefable. So, they are down to two Pokemon left at this point. There's Dondozo, who's looking pretty healthy, and then they have a Hisuian Gudra back there that has taken quite a bit of damage, and I feel like I can possibly set up Gyarados to win this match by the skin of its teeth. So, I'm going to go for the Meteor Mash here, just to get as much damage as possible, obviously I ain't doing any switching, and it does knock this thing to half. Uh, it doesn't do a lot. This thing's a damn whale. Listen, I'm just a piece of chewed gum over here, as it does finish me off with the body press. Now here's where things get absolutely intense, and <laughs> I can basically afford for Gyarados to knock this thing out, hopefully with one Thunderbolt, and then finish off the Gudra. Let's see if the clutch Gyarados can make it happen. There's, this is probably the only Gyarados in the world that actually wins this matchup against the Dondozo. Ordinarily, Gyarados gets absolutely bopped here, being only physical, but we're going to go for the Thunderbolt here, and amazingly enough, it is going to do enough to knock out the Dondozo, which is absolutely insane, but the most insane part is, the burn actually knocks me to 9 HP, meaning I die to one more turn of burn damage, but all I have to do is just finish off the Hisuian Gudra, and Choice Specs Gyarados is becoming like my favorite Pokemon of all time, as Gudra does come in, takes the Stealth Rock damage, and this thing is at exactly enough range to where I can hopefully finish it off. Keep in mind it is resisted, and this thing has insane special defense. I go for one last Thunderbolt, and that does take care of the Gudra, to where now Gyarados does not have to sit here for another turn and die to the burn damage, and that has got to be the most insane clutch possibly ever by a special attacking Gyarados. That was actually insane, and one of the most fun matches I've had in a while. Using this team, it definitely, it tests you, but when it works, it <laughs> is extremely interesting. Hey, if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video, and let me know if you'd like to see some more of this uh, style of content, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.